Welcome to Brainish English Stories. It was break time at Miss Capron's school. The girls gathered in a big group, talking seriously. I think it was bad, said Marcia Lewis, for her to make me stand in the corner for an hour just because I talked a little to Nellie Jones. I agree, said a bunch of other girls. She likes to show she's in charge, said Lottie Barnes. Definitely, or she wouldn't have kept Anna Mori and me at the front for missing a couple of math questions. Do you think she's very grumpy? I think if we counted all her grumpy words and looks, we'd be really busy. That's a good idea. Let's mark our slates every time she's grumpy and see how many marks we get. Yes, let's do it. Yes, yes, the girls all agreed loudly. Poor Miss Capron. She felt her heart sink as she noticed the unfriendly looks on her students' faces when they came back into the classroom after their serious talk. She had a bad headache that afternoon, so she didn't look as cheerful as usual. The girls, already biased against her, found plenty of reasons to mark down her grumpy moments. Soon Lottie Barnes showed her slate, which had lots of marks. Anna Mori did the same, then Lottie Jones, and in less than two minutes, Everyone in the school did, too. Miss Capron had to scold them for this, and then there was a loud noise of pencils clicking. Marcia Lewis accidentally dropped her slate on the floor, and then everyone else did the same. Girls, girls, said Miss Capron sternly, it seems like you've teamed up to break the rules. I won't continue with lessons until you're quiet and follow the rules. But even this didn't work for long. The girls were quiet for just a few minutes. Nellie Jones remembered. She had snuff in her pocket for her grandmother, and soon the room was filled with sneezes. Then paper balls started flying from everywhere and every girl seemed focused on her lesson. Soon, Marcia Lewis let out a quiet laugh, followed by Maddie Lee, and then others joined in until there was loud laughter filling the room. The mischievous spirit seems to be in charge here this afternoon, said Miss Capron. It's pointless to continue with lessons when I have to focus all my attention on keeping you in line. I'll give you another 15-minute break. If you can't calm down and behave, I'll have to take strong action. The girls felt a little guilty, but overall, they were happy with how their plan worked out. You know what? said Marcia Lewis. Miss Capron shouldn't be so grumpy. We got so many marks. Let's misbehave again when we go back to class, and she'll have to send us home. Then we can all go to the falls and have fun. That would be great, said Nellie Jones. Fantastic, agreed Mattie Lee. What's going on? asked Mary Payne, who had been absent from school all day and was surprised to see her usually well-behaved friend so excited. When she heard the whole story, she looked sad. Poor Miss Capron, how could you treat her like that? She deserves it for being so grumpy, said Lottie Barnes. Oh, you're seeing it the wrong way, girls. I once heard a story about a woman who started finding faults in her son's wife. The more she looked for faults, the more she found, until she thought her daughter-in-law was the most unpleasant person ever. She used to talk about her flaws to a dear friend. 
Once, her friend said to her, Jane may have faults, and some really unpleasant ones, but what if you try to find some good qualities in her character? I'm curious to know. The lady felt a bit offended by her friend's direct suggestion, but eventually decided to give it a try. Before she could even find half of Jane's good traits, she began to see her as a wonderful person. You've been doing the same thing as that lady, focusing on faults. Let's be like her for the rest of the afternoon, focusing on positive things. Let's see how many smiles we can get from Miss Capron. Mary Payne, one of the oldest girls in the school, often helped the others with their compositions and solved their problems. Since she was well-liked, the girls agreed, though somewhat reluctantly, to follow her suggestion. Miss Capron hesitated to ring the bell. The 15 minutes went by, and she felt she had to call her students. They came in quietly and in good order. Each girl sat quietly and began studying seriously. Sometimes, a friendly smile from the teacher would be met with another smile from a student, adding to the growing number of smile marks. The good behavior and focus on studying, along with the friendly looks, gradually brought a smile to Miss Capron's face. Eventually, the girls erased the marks, saying there was no need to keep count anymore. Marcia Lewis wrote on her slate, Let's smile all the time. Before dismissing the school for the day, Miss Capron said, My head hurt a lot before break, and I may have been impatient with you. Your good behavior since then shows me that I was wrong. Thank you, my dear girls, for your kindness, and I hope you'll forgive me as easily as I forgive you. School's out. The girls immediately surrounded her, showering her with kisses. We were very naughty, said Marcia Lewis, and it wasn't your fault at all. Then, little Libby Denny told the whole story of the plan, including Mary Payne's part. Miss Capron hugged Mary and said, Blessed are the peacemakers. Well, my dears, she continued, what was better, focusing on frowns or smiles? Definitely smiles. They all agreed. I hope you'll remember this lesson for the rest of your lives. Look past the bad and focus on the good in everyone. That way, you'll make yourselves and others happier and better. What's the lesson, girls? And each voice answered, We'll look past the bad and focus only on the good in those around us.